so welcome back to Into the Abyss. Um, this is the segment where I share with you uh, my uh, selections for streaming of the month. And all of these are free. And these ones actually are all on Netflix currently. Um, so I just a quick recap. I offer you five streaming recommendations. I do rank them one to five. Uh, but as I said before, um, I kind of have a, a weird sliding scale. You know, for the most part, there's um, how much is intellectually engaged me? Um, how much do I have to guess what's hap happening in the story? Then there's, uh, you know, is, was it just entertaining? You know, sometimes um, it can be very entertaining. Maybe the acting wasn't that great, uh, but it made me guess more about the plot. Or sometimes maybe I knew where this is going, but it was just so well done and so well shot uh, that I was really, really engaged. And anyway, these are just offered as suggestions. I am certainly not an, ex an expert. So here are my uh, top stri five streaming for this month. They're all on Netflix. Number one is a delightful gem that I highly recommend to you. No, you hate this. Um, called The Terrifier, uh, <laughs> directed by Damien Leon. The Terrifier, very simply, is uh, what if you had a murderous clown like Pennywise, stripped of um, anything important or worth substance, and this terror, this this uh, clown uh, just killed people. It's just a killer clown. It so the terrifier is. Um, it's really not for the faint of heart. Art the I will say this: Art the clown, the guy who plays Art the clown, does not utter a word. In the entire and it's a pretty good design. I, I, I haven't seen the movie, but I am familiar with Art the Clown. Yeah, so it's a good Art, design. Art the Clown does not utter a word throughout the entire movie, and it is pretty pretty creepy. Um, and and a lot of it, there's a lot of uh, call outs um, in in the, the Terrifier to 80s slasher films. Um, like there's this one scene which I'm still trying to place where uh, Art kills somebody, chops his head off, hollows out the skull then puts a candle in it, making it into a jack-o'-lantern. I know that's a call-out to an 80s movie. I just really can't remember which one it was. Um, I will also say kudos to the Terrifier for practical effects. Uh, there's a scene where a girl is sawed in half as she's hanging upside down. Spread-eagled. I'll give you two guesses as to where he starts cutting from. Uh, and at one point I'm like... Oh, those are intestines that are just flopping on the floor. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely give you ter the Terrifier is uh, definitely a kudos for special for like practical effects. Um, if you're sensitive to gore, this movie is not for you. Um, but uh, the Terrifier definitely, and it only comes in for uh, number five because again, it was pretty extreme, and I'm not normally a, a gore fan. Um, but it definitely is a callback to those 80s slashers movies, uh, and it's pretty intense. So the Terrifier for number five. Number four um, is Haunting on Fraternity Row, uh, <laughs> by, uh, directed <laughs> by, by Brent Searson. So how, many, how many cliches are in this? <laughs> so haunt, Haunting on Fraternity Row is a found footage movie. And we just, <laughs> it's another cliche. Okay, go ahead. We discussed this earlier in the evening. The one thing about um, found footage movies is there's a, a line, right, where you ask yourself with suspense of disbelief, why are they still filming? Why is this being filmed? I will say this. Haunting on Fraternity Row does skip past this because the Fraternity Brothers decide... We need to capture every moment of, a moment of this epic party of decadence and bacchanalia. So they rig cameras throughout their whole frat house, throughout their whole um, courtyard, you know, in their dorm rooms. Uh, and we do start the movie with a cop cam pulling up to the crime scene so that it is implied to us that, oh... These unseen editors have edited all the footage for us. So that actually wasn't bad that the guy just said, this is going to be the most epic party ever. We are going to record every moment of it. 
So that wasn't bad because you don't have the, like, okay, idiot, why are you still carrying the camera? The guy had rigged all the cameras throughout the frat house ahead of time. So that's okay. Um, believe it or not, this movie is surprisingly effective. Um, and there's, um, there's some mythology here that's hinted at that never really gets um, expounded upon, uh, mostly because it's, uh, it's haunting on Fraternity Row. And, like, well, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't aiming to go Everyone to was go in there. a frat party and having threesomes and drinking and things like that. But basically, at some point, early in the preparations for this party, um, somebody accidentally breaks into this, like, I don't know how, I can't even remember how they did it. I think they were just looking for um, a place to store their kegs. And they break into this hidden sub-basement where they find all this occult stuff and all these light bulbs. And it's weird because it's like a safe room built of entire light bulbs. Of course, we find out why. Because the demon they've accidentally unleashed can only exist as a shadow. So uh, we never really quite find out why this happened. There's some uh, references to former frat brother brothers who accidentally invoked a demon. <laughs> so basically this demon just starts killing everybody, usually in the middle of having sex. Um, but ironically enough, it's not as dumb as you would think it is. So, haunting on Fraternity Row, number four. Number three is Gehenna. Gehenna is a really good example of one of those movies that where the acting is only eh, but the concept is really good. This is also one of those movies that says, starring Lance Henriksen, you know, the guy that played Bishop in Aliens, and he's only in it for five minutes. Um, but basically in Gehenna, these resort developers are checking out uh, this island of Saipan, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, they're implying it's an oriental island, as a place for their new um, resort. Well, as they're surveying the place, they find an underground World War II bunker. What do they do? They investigate it. But actually, it's not a bad um, hook here. Because they're like, we're surveying this place. Nobody told us about this. How can we build a resort when there's this underground bunker we know nothing about? So they do go in the underground brown bunker, a bunker to investigate. Predictably, <laughs> they get trapped inside. They also find a super, super old, like he looks like he's like 100 years old almost, corpse who's, like, eating this can of peaches. And then when they surprise him, he, like, stumbles at them and mumbles something about, you're all going to die, you're all going to die. And then they accidentally, like, you know, one guy freaks out and shoves him against a wall, and his head hits a wall, and he dies. What Gehenna becomes, of course, I don't know if anyone knows the translation of Gehenna. Do you know the translation of Gehenna? It sounds really familiar. I heard it before. I'm trying to think of what it is. Gehenna is the Jewish uh, term for Hades or for hell. Okay. okay. So what we end up getting is a very interesting story that has a that has a Moebius strip in it, which mm -hmm. is a time loop, um, and it involves the idea of the afterlife and hell. And it's one of those um, movies where, okay, so maybe the acting is only eh, but the concept is really strong. It's a really, really interesting movie. Um, shout out to Nikki um, Gray Beal if she sees this, because I know I posted about this over the summer, and she's like, favorite movie ever. So, Nikki, <laughs> thinking of you, thinking of you and your mini little Miller highlights. I don't know if you still drink those. Okay, number two is, oh, by the way, um, Gehenna was directed by Hiroshi... Uh, Katajimi. Number two is The Monster, directed by Brian Bentino. The Monster is a fabulous movie. Um, the Monster is a really... Have you seen this yet? Mm. You would love this. Okay. The Monster is a straightforward story. Um, a divorced mother uh, whose life has been really rough. She has not made good decisions. And she's, she's being forced to give up custody of her homemade daughter. 
And it's one of those things where the actress, I'm sorry I didn't look up her name before this. The actress does a really good job of portraying. Whoop, 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 whoop. Look at the phone. I'm not sure I what Chuck did for just you. did there. Oh, anyway, look at the phone so uh, I can look up the actress. Yeah, anyway. Um, she does a really good job of portraying this person who, she's not a really good person. Mm. But she knows she's not a really good person. Mm. She also regrets not being a better mother. Um, and she's basically on her way to drop her only daughter off with her ex-husband because she's been forced to give up custody. It's in the middle of the night. They catch a flat or their car breaks down, something like that, in the middle of the road. And as a tow truck comes to help them, we realize there's something in the woods mm -hmm. that's hunting them. Now, we're never given any explanation as to what the monster is. Um, you know, and there's a very simple survival plot line here. But the mother-daughter dynamic is so wrenching, so well done. I mean, this is one of those stories where, okay, and this is what this my, my streaming rankings are all about. The story in Gehenna was probably more complex and kept you guessing more. But the acting in the monster and the portrayal of this mother who knows she's failed. She's no, she knows she's failed as a mother. And now she has this last chance to protect her daughter against these terrible odds. Um, and you kind of know how this movie is going to go. But it's so well done. This, just, one's been, this one's been on my radar for a while. Yeah. I, I am familiar with the movie. I've seen the trailer. I, I actually do want to see this. As a monster fan, you would love yep. this movie. Okay. Number one for this segment is found footage again. <laughs> As above, so below. So this is directed by John Eric Dowdle. Okay. This is about a researcher who's trying to father, follow in her father's footsteps. Because she's looking for the Philosopher's Stone. Hey, Harry Potter. Anyway, she's looking for the Philosopher's Stone. And she finds um, leads that say that they are buried in the catacombs under Paris, France. But when we get to the catacombs under Paris, France, we are introduced to the possibility... These catacombs are not only leading to the Philosopher's Stone, but maybe leading to hell itself. This was a really great film. Uh, because it's got of, a lot of really good reviews. Yeah, have you read it? Have you seen it? No, you have seen it. Okay, so Chuck has seen it. Um, because they're filming a documentary, this gives us a natural why you always filming this. Um, and there's, I don't want to spoil too much of this, but the whole term, as above, so below, implies the idea that there's a mirror relationship between heaven and hell. So their way of finding their way out is really unique, it's really well done, and it's also really interesting how the hell for certain people are personalized. It's your own personal hell. Um, so yeah, as above, so below, my number one. So let's recap really quick. The Terrifier, if you're really into gore, and a super creepy clown that does not speak the entire time, as well as an inexplicable supernatural resurrection. And, oh, I do have to say this about The Terrifier. So in The Terrifier, Art the Clown has this bag of tools which he tortures people terribly throughout the whole movie. Toward the end of the movie, when his last person, that last victim... Spoiler! Is, so, spoiler yeah. alert! Spoiler! Spoiler! When his last victim is crawling away with his bag of really inventive tools, what does he do? He pulls out a Glock and shoots her! Okay. I think it's, I think it's funny. <laughs> it, it was. You're like, what? And I, I should note, that I watched The Terrifier over the summer outside by my fire pit after I had had a lot of apple teenies. <laughs> Just to clarify. 
Number two is haunting. Wait, wait, wait. we need four and three. <laughs> Apparently, it's oh, four no. or three. Number four. four. Number four is haunting on Fraternity Row. It is a uh, found footage movie that is actually surprisingly a lot better than you think it would be. Number three is Gehenna, a time loop story where the acting is eh. Lance Hexton is there for five minutes, but it's actually a pretty conceptually it's a good movie. Number two is The Monster, really great dynamic between mother and daughter. And number one, As Above, So Below. All of these are on Netflix, so check them out.